Hi, good afternoon uh, to all the parents. I'd like to thank you for joining me on this uh, Thursday afternoon on a Facebook Live session. And I'm Dr. Tan Ing Guan, your child pediatrician from Lam Wai Hospital. Today, I'll be sharing on a topic which is uh, weaning the baby the Malaysian way. Now, in my 20 over years as a doctor, I've been approached by many parents who are in doubt when it comes to weaning and feeding the baby. They're asking me when and how and what food to be introduced first. Now, many of the Malaysian parents have only to fall back on the experiences of their parents and grandparents when they start weaning the baby. Now, they also have also started to watch uh, vlogs and blogs by foreign uh, Western uh, parents as well as also going through YouTube channels which is featuring experiences of Western parents and Western doctors. Their views and, and their cultures that they introduce may not be applicable to our Malaysian lifestyle and uh, to our Malaysian children who may not be acceptable to the food that they introduce. So it is my fervent hope that through the session I'm going to share with you, you will be able to be more confident to embark on the food journey of your child. To be able to create a safe and fun and experience to wean your baby, I will, have, I will share with you some tips and tricks to help you along the way. Now, as parents, we must be able to determine what food to introduce to the baby. We should start off with a very bland and also hypoallergenic food. Now, to be, babies are difficult to accept solid foods. We may have to we may have to uh, reintroduce and reintroduce up to eight to nine times before the baby can actually accept the food. Now, when we when we do not reintroduce the food that the baby refuses and skip the food we may create in future a baby who is a fussy eater. Now, we only stop introducing certain food when we find that the baby shows signs of allergy. Now, the signs of allergies are basically rashes over the face and mouth areas, swelling of the face and body, um, having difficulty in breathing, vomiting, as well as diarrhea. Now, if we come across this, this signs of allergy, we should note down what type of food and then this type of food should be omitted for the baby and should not be reintroduced again. To understand the essence of weaning, we need to first understand the meaning of weaning. The meaning of weaning is basically the transition of baby from uh, some liquid diet, namely milk, formula of breast milk to semi-solid and later on to solid food. Right. Many parents have always asked me, when is the appropriate time to start weaning? Now, the according to the UK guidelines on feeding and weaning, six months would be the most appropriate time. Now, at this age, the baby would have attained some degree of immunity or immune system would be more responsive. So hence, when we are actually introducing food which has germs and pathogens, our body can actually fight the germs. Hence, there will be lesser incidence of stomach and lung infections. Now, in the same context of six months, our body would have more matured digestive as well as kidney function, better kidney function. Now, when we, we, our digestive system is more matured, we are able to handle more solid foods and absorption of food is better, as well as our kidney can secrete the byproducts of the solid food that we do not need also better from our body. The third reason, the six month period would be the best would be actually the increased immune system in which when exposed to allergies, our body will not react to a full blown uh, asthma attack or eczema. So, the child also at six months would have attained a very good oral motor skills. Now, the oral motor skills are required when we start feeding. Now, there, the bit, many parents are very worried, especially when they feed the child and noted the child gagging and choking. 
Now, with this, in this context, I would like to explain what is gagging and what is choking. The gagging is actually a self-protective mechanism by the baby when we feed the baby too fast or we, and the baby cannot control and the baby will gag by thrusting out the, the food through his tongue and coughing, turning red in the process. Child looks uncomfortable, but rest assured, after some time, it will regain composure and the baby will be well again. This is the time to reintroduce food after the baby has regained composure. On the other hand, choking is more of a serious problem. This is when the baby cannot control and there is no involuntary uh, control and the food enters the windpipe. This actually blocks the, the, wind cha the, the airway channels for the baby. The baby will turn blue and the baby cannot cry. There's no noise coming out from the, the baby. Where else gagging, the baby can still cry. So in this sense, the choking is a far more serious uh, condition. So to prevent choking, we should introduce food slowly above the age of six months. Now, is it, is it why some people ask me, why, why should not we wait longer? Why should not we wait at eight, nine months where the baby is more mature? The answer is that the food that are nutrients that they provide through the breast milk or the bottle milk or formula milk may not be sufficient to our bodies uh, or the baby's body. The baby's essential vitamins such as A, B, E and also iron and minerals are insufficient in the breast milk. Hence, baby should be weaned at the age of 6 months. Right, Why, one may ask me what are the three stages of weaning. Now, the first stage of weaning actually is needs active participation of the parents who feeds the baby with using a spoon, blended, pureed, liquid to semi-solid food. This baby is set propped up in a high chair and the, baby, the mother and parents will be feeding the baby. Now in this process, there should not be any distractions whatsoever. There should not be any outbursts of people walking by. There should not be any, uh, any exposure to TV or listening to music or playing of handphone during this period. Any distraction will cause the baby to gag and choke. Now, if the baby gags, do not intervene. Let the baby cry, let the baby turn red, let the baby self regain composure. And once the baby regains composure, then again, we will reintroduce feeding again. Now, the, third, the second stage of weaning is finger food. Now, this is a small, socially advanced, non-traditional feeding way that we are now exposed to. Now, this is a baby-led baby -led weaning process in which the baby is actively participating in feeding themselves. Now, what happens is that we put foods, our finger food, which we will be discussing in the later slides, onto the tray of the high chair. Now, baby will be having to self-feed themselves, hence needing a very high eye-hand coordination to be able to pick up the food and put it into the mouth. So, these babies are actively participating in the feeding of, the, of themselves. Now, the third final stage is the child being able to manipulate the spoon. And manipulating the spoon needs very high um, hand coordination, which the child will feed themselves lumpy food. The, a lot of parents will ask me, am I doing it right? Now, the answer lies with the baby. When you look at the baby, you will know. The baby, if you do it right, feeding is right, the baby would be a healthy baby who attains achievable M, uh, BMI, weight and height appropriate for age, the baby will have allergy-free, the baby will embrace solid food while not rejecting milk. The baby will be not constipated and the baby will not have any diarrhea. Are we the boss, you and I, when it comes to weaning the baby? No. The baby is the boss. The baby will be determining when the baby is ready for feeding. So, when is the baby ready? Now, the baby will be ready when he shows signs that he's able to hold up his head 
when he propped up to sit in a high chair. Number two, the baby wakes up middle of the night asking more and more food, more milk, more and wants to bottle feed more, hence showing that the milk does not appease her appetite and she is still hungry. The third is showing signs that, that he's interested in what food we are eating and then um, either by calling out or telling you, telling you by, on his own way, by his own way. Now, baby also starts putting things in the mouth and drools a lot. And again, the baby shows signs of chewing and there is teeth in, and teething. And when there is teeth in the baby, it, the baby with more teeth will be more, um, more ready to start feeding than those who do not have. And also, when you put your finger into the mouth, there is a loss of tongue tr trust reflex. What should we prepare when we start to feed? Now, we have to prepare several things. One is a high chair. The high chair should have a tray which is easy to clean. We should have roll towels and pillows so they can prop the baby up to sit. We, the baby's chair should be placed at the same spot. The timing of feeding should be exactly the same so that the ba once the baby sits down there, that he knows that it is time to eat and nothing else. It is called discipline. Right. We also must prepare a spoon, a bowl and a cup with suction because the baby cannot tip over the food and water when the suction is stuck, the, the bowl and cups are stuck to the tray. The last of it all is to prepare lots of newspaper and plastic because it's a feeding with a baby is a very messy affair. So you have to put a lot of newspapers and plastic all around under the, the high chair. A lot of parents ask me whether additional fluids is essential for the, for the child. The answer if the baby is 6 months and below, all the essential fluids or water that is needed is already provided in the breast milk or the formula milk. So no extra water is actually needed. However, if the baby is going into weaning food where the solid foods are given, hence uh, it is justifiable to give some amount of water. Now, we can give water uh, or sugary, uh, water, uh, sugary fluids through either a sipper cup or open mouth cup. Now, I would rather prefer an open mouth cup which actually promotes um, the facial muscles development which ultimately helps the baby chew and learn to eat as well as to be able to speak and phonate better rather than using a sipper cup. What are the guidelines, meaning guidelines that we need to follow? While focusing on the semi-solid and solid food, we must not forget that milk plays an important role in, in, in the calories, providing the calories for the baby. Now the baby still needs to take about five to 700 ml of, of milk per day, which is amounts to about 20 to 35 ounces of milk to start off with when we start solid. Now a baby of six to eight months still relies two thirds of its calories from milk. Now again, we, do, we have to remember when we introduce a new food, you have to introduce one new food at a time and continue three, five or seven days before reintroducing another new food. This will actually let the baby uh, understand the texture and the taste before, and also for us to look for signs of allergies before moving on to a new type of food. Now we must be very conscious about how much we feed the baby. We should not be too enthusiastic to feed the baby too much now we need to look at the signs that the baby has had enough, how the baby will push away the, the food, the baby will turn his face, the baby will close the mouth. So when you see this sign, stop, you know that it's enough. We start off with half a teaspoon, slightly gradually increasing the eloquence to 5 to 10 teaspoon, which amounts to 30 gram. That is a, is a complete meal. So when you reach 30 gram or 10 to 10 spoons, 10 teaspoons, that means you have actually achieved one complete meal for the baby. Now, when is the best or ideal time to feed the baby? We should not feed the baby too early. 
or we should make it about maybe 11, say we do brunch rather than lunch or breakfast. Now for the early start of breakfast, we should feed the baby some milk first to make the baby slightly full, but yet to the extent that she's hungry enough and eager enough to start on solids at 11 o'clock. If the baby is hungry and eager enough, the baby will accept the solid food more. So the best time will be 11. Now when the baby rejects or dislikes the food, you try to incorporate some milk, the some familiar taste to mask the foreign food that he's taking. So by mixing a little bit of milk, it makes the, the foreign food or the solid food more acceptable to the baby. Now, you can again and again retry if the baby refuses. Uh, again, if there's no allergies, you can retry and retry again. Sometimes it can take up to eight to nine tries. But once the, the, the baby, ultimately the baby will learn to accept the, the food that we give. When it comes to choosing a food, there's a lot of dilemma to be and a lot of questions to be answered. So I hope that in the next uh, couple of slides, we will be able to guide you along the way. Well, most of the parents will always take the easy way out. Well, we, it's easy to go to Tesco and Sunshine and Giant. What? Well, we'll go there and buy. Well, this should not be the case. When it comes to the, the health and also a well-being of our loved ones, we should not compromise. We do not settle for conventional. We should go organic. We should go to the nearest neighbor, organic neighbor, neighborhood organic shops and look around for what they have to offer for our children. I would advise to start off with a very easily digestible, very bland diet, which is uh, rice porridge, may it be uh, white rice or brown rice. Always start with a single grain of white, and white, white rice or brown rice, subsequently going into single grain, more complex uh, grains like um, millet, oats and quinoa. Always looking for allergies and acceptability of taste by the baby. Now the baby, we should rotate all these grains, maybe a, a week once, different type of grains to let the baby enjoy and taste the different textures and taste of these different grains. Ultimately to note which are the grains which is acceptable to the baby and what the baby would enjoy and also to look for out for any side effects. Why, is, why should we choose organic over conventional uh, uh, grains or cereals that we can get from the supermarket? Of course, there's a reason. Now, organic foods are actually grains, uh, single grains uh, which are less allergenic, which are grown in an environment which is pesticide-free, preservatives-free, and they do not add any other foreign vitamins as well as no sugars and no uh, uh, no preservatives and also artificial uh, coloring as well as artificial flavoring is added. So as we can see, quinoa itself is so superior to other, other, other types of uh, grains. Well, as you see in quinoa, the proteins are higher. They provide very good vitamin Bs and E. They also provide uh, calcium for bone growth. It has high fiber, hence there's no constipation. It also provides Amino acids, which is essential amino acids. It also provides omega-3 fatty acids, which is for brain growth and development. What can you ask for more? When it's coming, when coming to convincing the older generations regarding cereals, it's always been a quite a challenge because conventionally, the older generation has always been had the mindset that uh, Nestle, Gerber's, or Heinz are the best brands around when it comes to uh, baby food. Now, these brands have been, Cerelec has been a synonym with uh, baby cereals throughout the generations. Trying to change the mindset of the, the parents, it is a challenge. But we as uh, advocates of uh, uh, the new generation, we should move forward and learn that organic food is always better because these cereals, these cereals tend to be high in sugar contents, preservatives, and also added additives of coloring and flavors. So we should go forward and change our mindset. While making our baby food, the foremost is importance is to, to prepare a safe, clean, and healthy and nutritious 
baby food. Now, to prepare a clean and nutritious baby food, we have foremost is to wash our hands while when we are preparing and also to clean the vegetables and, and fruits that we are going to use in our preparation. Now, the most important is that to prepare, we can always use a blender, we can always use a grater, we can always use chop and slice and to use a uh, mash the, 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 the fruits and vegetables. After pureeing and blending the vegetables, we have to steam the vegetables. While waiting for the piping hot vegetables to cool down, we need to prepare to store it. Now, to, if the vegetables are not to be taken within the 24 hour period, it should be advisable that we store it in an airtight container, individual containers, and or we can put it into a ice cube tray. Now it's always easier and by means of time consumption and also it is also economical to prepare the food for a period of five to seven days. Now, as I said, you need to prepare five to seven days to let the baby experience the texture and the taste and while looking out for allergies. So when we prepare and immediately prepare, we can store it into the freezer safely for that period of time, keeping the, the food safe as well as to preserve the taste of the vegetables that we prepared. Now, when we want to thaw the, the vegetables, we can thaw the vegetables uh, and also either steam the vegetables or put into a hot uh, uh, water bath or you can also use microwave to thaw and defrost and also to heat up the vegetables. Now, by using the microwave, you've got to look out for hot spots when you for in the when you are feeding the baby, make sure that there's no hot spots that can burn the baby's tongue. Now, the importance is that we have to finish the food that we when it touches the baby's saliva within one hour. If you have within one hour you do not finish, discard the remaining food to prevent any infection in the stomach. Now, what type of vegetables that we usually start off? Usually we start off with vegetables which has texture and has some amount of starch and sweetness so that the baby has got the chance to chew onto the chew the vegetables. Now, we vegetables are the least allergic uh, of all the foods. So that's why we always start with vegetables. Now, I do not advise you to start on leafy vegetables because they lack the texture. I lack the texture. Now, the type of vegetables that we start off would be better to start off with bitter tasting ones such and blender ones such as uh, broccoli, peas, uh, this uh, uh, avocado and cauliflower subsequently leaving the carrots, pumpkin and potato, sweet potatoes to the last because when the baby takes the sweet the sweetness of this uh, uh, carrots and pumpkin they may reject the blender and more bitter vegetables. Now a lot of controversies when you say whether to introduce uh, meat or proteins so early in the stage. Now because a lot of people believe that pro babies cannot digest proteins as well as adults, which is true, but we cannot withhold uh, introduction of proteins for too long because we are going to use proteins later on in the making of kanji and porridge. Now, it is advisable to start off with a white meat like uh, rabbit or chicken uh, using the breast meat, milk, uh, breast, um, breast meat. We need to puree, dice, blend and subsequently steam. We use this during the weaning of the baby. Now, we should also introduce fruit juice early in the diet. Now, the fruit juice will give the vitamins which is not available in meat or vegetables. Now, fruit juices, I would actually advise to use uh, or to choose fruits which are non-citrus fruits. Non-citrus non fruits like apple, mango, papaya, pear, carrot, dragon fruits are sweet, yet it does not cause uh, gastritis and it does not cause allergies such as, as uh, citrus fruits. We may cause rash uh, in certain children and also, and, and these uh, citrus fruits are like kiwi, uh, grapes, strawberry, pineapple, a uh, grapefruit. Now, so what we need to do is we need to blend the fruit juice. We need to sieve out the uh, the, the 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 husk, 
and then with the, the juice itself, we need to dilute the juice with water. The idea of diluting, diluting the juice with water uh, is to reduce the sweetness, hence to prevent the, to decay and also dependent, dependent on, uh, through, uh, on uh, true sweetness by the, by the babies. So we can always dilute uh, one part of juice to two parts, three parts or four parts of water depending on how thick or how sweet the, the, ju the fruits that we use. In the Malaysian or Asian context, the porridge or the kanji is essential in the feeding of the child, where else Western may not see it that way. While washing the grains that we use to cook the porridge, the most important is to soak the grains. Now the grains that we use are not the husk, they are full of they are, they are full husk uh, grains which may have certain compounds like saponin, which cause an uh, after bitter taste. Now, a lot of babies will reject it outright. So what we need to do is to clean the, the we are not removing the husk. The idea is not to remove the husk. The idea is to clean the saponin. So we need to actually immerse the grains in hot water for half an hour to one hour to remove all the uh, bitterness and subsequently put it into sieve and then through running water clean the 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 uh, grains again properly after washing the grains you need to blend the grains and to prepare to cook like normal rice now uh, rather than using white rice which has very high glycemic index and mix and will make the baby fat and does not provide any other nutrients such as amino acids um, vitamin b and e and also uh, omega-3 i would like to choose three four grain rice which is a four grain uh four grains which is a brown rice millet quinoa and buckwheat each with their own uh, specific essential minerals and vitamins complementing each other as i said after cleaning and blending we should put it into a slow cooker or you can use a stove to double boil and we sh should add meat now the meat should be a lean meat uh, starting with chicken perhaps pork uh, you could use beef and lamb you put the whole meat into it whole we're not going to let the baby eat the meat we're just going to let the baby uh, make the the porridge sweet okay right then we have to uh, also put in vegetables the vegetables that we choose should complement each other meaning we should give we should give half green and half orange or yellow vegetables now the green leafy vegetables will provide selenium, magnesium and also iron, whereas the orange or yellow uh, vegetables would provide vitamin D and A. Now the, right, the vegetables that we usually use are basically lettuce for greens, uh, lettuce, broccoli, um, uh, spinach, bayam for, uh, and also we can also use empress uh, vegetables. Uh, for the for the orange color, we can use uh, tomatoes, we can use carrots, uh, we can use squash or pumpkin, uh, and also potatoes. Now, uh, after we cook, we should, before serving, we should put in a, one teaspoon of flaxseed oil, which provides uh, omega-3 and also DHA, which provides neuro and brain development. Also, a, a teaspoon of coconut virgin oil, which is good in to provide antibodies and immune system to build up the immune and strengthen the immune system as well as also to for hormonal balance now the idea is to have a balance of three pyramid food here one is carbohydrate two is proteins and the oil or is provided by flaxseed and coconut virgin oil now finger food is a new concept uh, is is a non-traditional way of feeding where the baby uh, has to feed themselves. Now, the baby should have a good hand-eye coordination, able to leave food which is placed in front of him or her on a tray, on a high chair tray and into the mouth. It's a very ind socially independent uh, process of feeding. Uh, this is called the baby-led weaning. Now, the in this baby-led weaning, the food that we introduce should be soft enough and uh, enough for the baby and not too mushy uh, but uh, it should not be hard that the baby bites into it and it will 
accidentally swallow into the lung, right? So we can either steam or bake the food to prepare it in strips uh, where the baby can easily hold and manage the food. Uh, the, the food that we usually use is it can be uh, raw cucumber, soft um, uh, fruits, uh, it can be soft cooked vegetables, it can be uh, cooked chicken breast, it could be dry puff cereal which actually is, uh, when mixed with saliva is actually very soft, tofu, uh, pasteurized unsalted cheese, uh, lightly toasted bread. Now, the normal bread that we give, if it's very soft bread, what happens is that when it mixes with saliva, it becomes a, like a block. This will actually, when the baby swallows, it sticks to the back of the throat. It actually can choke the baby. So when you lightly toast the bread, it becomes something like a dry puff. And and the, when the baby bites, it does not it, it doesn't it's not hard enough to actually accidentally swallow it. It will actually mix with saliva and again uh, be able to dissolve. At this stage also, we should introduce um, uh, organic uh, teething biscuits. Uh, this, at this stage, baby would have actually uh, have about two to four teeth, and uh, the baby would be uh, their teething and be itchy, itchiness in the gum. So it's time to actually let the baby gnaw and chew on teething biscuits. This also will help uh, in the development of facial muscles, and subsequently, the baby is able to um, phonate or also develop speech better because when the baby chews, the baby swallows, the baby is able to talk faster. Here also we can also start to introduce uh, pureed blended um, uh, fruit, fruits. Uh, we, uh, these uh, fruits are not, we do not now at this stage at seven to eight months, we do not uh, in, uh, give fruit juice already. So it is uh, more pureed fruit uh, for to the baby. Now pureed fruits like bananas, avocados, papaya and pear, non-citrus fruits, can be introduced at this stage. Now, the processed canned food has always been the first choice of food by working parents who are too busy to prepare their own food for the babies. Now, they, they find it easier just to take it from the shelf and then heat it up and feed the baby. However, it is not preferred in view of the fact that to keep the, the food from being spoiled in the shelf for six months to two years, it is impossible not to put in some sort of preservatives. Now, this style of food also has very high sugar and salt contents as well as artificial colouring and flavouring. Now, this style of food, when kept for a long time, they lose the texture, the natural texture. They lose their natural taste. So, babies find it very difficult to appreciate the individual taste. And also, there are a lot of mixtures of different food in the one can itself. It could be a combination of um, maybe turkey with chicken or ham with tuna. So these problems will arise when the baby is taking the food. They do not know what is ham and what is tuna and what is turnip and what is carrots. So the natural food is the natural taste of and texture of the food is lost in this process of canning the food. The other contents of the food, which is so varied, may also lead to some sort of allergy when the baby takes this food. And that no way we can pinpoint what, what causes allergy when the baby develops it while taking the food. Being Malaysians, we can't run away from tasty food. Malaysian food is so good. The tastier, the better. Now, this doesn't hold good for babies. Baby taste buds are not well developed. Don't force it to develop so fast. Don't fast forward the development of their taste buds by adding on salt and sugar. Now, salt and sugar will cause, salt itself will cause kidney failure if it's overloaded. If the baby below one year takes one gram of uh, uh, salt, it will cause kidney failure later on in life. And the sugars will cause ultimately cause tooth decays. So say no to salt and sugar for babies. Now, we are going to list out the allergic food, the food that we find that we should introduce with caution, food that we should leave to the last to introduce because once the baby is allergic to it, it will trigger the, the allergic cascade and the baby will not be able to take the food 
for a very long time. Now, the most important is the egg. Now, the egg, we should introduce the egg roughly about nine months to a year. Now, introduction of egg is important because we're going for immunization of MMR, which contains uh, chicken egg, is um, ancient egg embryo. So, if we do not introduce early, we do not know whether there's allergy. Now, when you introduce egg, it's very important to full ball the egg and introduce in small amounts the yolk first. Subsequently, if there's no allergy, to, for, to continue the, the, with the whites. Now, certain grains are more allergic than others. The grains that I suggested for porridge is the most least allergic. Remember, brown rice, millet, quinoa and buckwheat. Now, barley, wheat, rice, soya, on the other hand, are very allergic. Now, a lot of parents ask me whether I can use uh, oils in uh, porridge. I say yes, but a lot of parents use macadamia and walnut oil. Now, macadamia and uh, almond oil, these oils are actually very, very allergic because it is not only a groundnut oil, groundnut is allergic, but all tree nuts. And tree nuts, if you are using groundnuts and tree nuts, they are cross allergens they can actually cause allergy to all sorts of nuts later on. Now, what about shellfish? Shellfish and molluscus, are, all these uh, squids, um, clams, um, um, lala, seafood, these are things that uh, are very highly allergenic. I try to postpone uh, introduction of this shellfish into the child. Now, what about deep sea fish, such as sharks, um, swordfish. Now, sharks are very, 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 very um, common and also is a favorite among uh, older generation because they do not have bones, right? Um, that uh, So, they introduce shark very early in uh, childhood. They also, now we are also seeing parents buying salmon, halibut and cod as the uh, economy is better. Parents are thinking that they are providing DHA high uh, diet for the baby. In, in, actually, in actual sense, uh, the mercury content of these deep sea fish is so high that it actually can cause delay in the neurodevelopment of the baby. In fact, it will reduce the IQ rather than increase the IQ of the baby. Right? It's toxic. Now, we also should withhold using uh, uh, introduction of honey which may contain, either processed or non-processed honey, may contain, uh, may contain uh, butylism toxin which can cause a respiratory uh, depression or the uh, baby cannot breathe yeah, by actually paralyzing the muscles. So honey is not indicated for babies who are one year and below. Now, tea and coffee, fizzy drinks are also not allowed in children. Uh, berries such as strawberries, blueberries, uh, cranberries, uh, these berries are cross, they may have cross re reactive re allergens, uh, like I said. And um, uh, also try to avoid citrus fruits when you are introducing uh, uh, fruits in the beginning. While well, introducing foods, um, bear in mind, uh, always safety is the outward concern. Now, while introducing food, that is important to actually observe the child feeding. But if you give the child rounded fruits, food which is uh, hard and, and easily swallowed, which may enter the airway and cause choking, uh, I think it's not warranted. Even though you're standing there, it, you could not stop the thing from happening. So rather than uh, rather than risk this hazarded food, just totally omit it for the moment. Food like hot dogs, uh, popcorn, uh, grape, peanut, raw carrot, lychee and jelly, which can accidentally be swallowed into the airway causing choking. Um, these are food that we should avoid. Well, with the last slide, I would like to thank you for your attention and for being such a, a pleasant crowd. Um, if there's any questions, you can always forward now through the messenger. Um, I'll try to explain and uh, to your doubts and also to clear your doubts. And if you would like to talk to me further or to reach me, you can call my office at 652-8848 or you can contact me on my email address any doubts i would try to help you clear it and um, and to end i would like to say thank you and uh, would like to wish you a um, happy journey happy embarking on a weaning diet uh, do the correct way you get good results 
results you'll be happy with. You get the what you feed your baby would ultimately make or break your baby. And um, I hope to see you soon on my stay stay tuned to the next uh, every live, which is I will be talking about child safety and child proving your house, how to um, take care of your child and to prevent injuries in and around the house. Um, with this note, I'd like to say thank you and stay safe, wear your mask, let us be COVID free. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, there's a question regarding uh, olive oil in our diet for babies. Uh, usually, uh, for me, olive oil is fairly good because I'm, I'm, I'm also doing uh, dermatology. So, uh, I see a lot of patients with uh, eczema, uh, uh, ectopic eczema. I note that, uh, noted that actually a lot of patients uh, on uh, with ectopic eczema, they usually, usually actually advise olive oil in their diet. But in normal babies, uh, we more prefer if you can give uh, flaxseed oil, which has got very high in DHA, which will promote brain and also eye development, as well as coconut virgin oil, which actually is good for hormones and also antibodies. But uh, I think there's also, there are many types of oils now, like avocado oil, then they have also got, uh, what do you call that, walnut oil, macadamia nuts oil. These three nuts oil, I do not prefer. But if you can, it is, it's a good idea to have some sort of oil in your diet because uh, in our diet, in the food pyramid, usually we have three types of food. One is, of course, your proteins. It comes from your meat. Two, of course, your carbohydrate. It comes from your, your grains. Number three would be your, definitely would be your oils. So the oils is very essential. So the, cho the choice of oil that I choose would be flaxseed and coconut virgin oil, but you do have the option of using olive oil. I, I'm, I'm not against that. But olive oil would be very good, especially for those who are uh, having eczema or skin skin uh, skin disorders. So how much oil, usually a teaspoon will do. And if you oil also is very good that if those babies are not fat, who are very thin, you put a little bit of oil, actually they do very good and they, they, they gain, gain weight a lot. So if there's any uh, chance of putting oil, just put oil into the baby. Uh, some, if you're bigger, when you're better, you're bigger, some actually use butter, uh, butter as, uh, as a form. But I would actually advise you butter maybe a year plus when the baby is bigger because butter tends to have to have a lot of lactose and they may cause a bit of diarrhea also, right? So I hope that answers your question. Okay, uh, for this, uh, for the eczema patients, uh, rice brand oil, I think there are many new oils in the market um, because, uh, the, I mean, the most famous one, like the, the, the other person has said, is olivinol. Olivinol is uh, been highly recommended for, uh, which is the olive oil base, highly recommended for uh, this purpose. Right? It's, it's, it's got uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, which is uh, linolic, linolenic acid, so it's good for skin. But uh, I'm, I'm not much, uh, not much, very familiar with rice bran oil. Um, that I, I may have to check it up and, and give you an answer later. And uh, you can drop me an email and uh, as I said, then you could uh, always call up the office. I'll try to find out for you, rice bran oil. Really sorry, uh, I can't comment for the moment, yes. Okay, can I ask which type of oil is suitable when trying to prepare for babies and as we do for scrambled eggs? Okay, so the thing is uh, for scrambled eggs, uh, if the, um, I hope, uh, Christine, you are talking about babies who are above a certain age group uh, for scrambled eggs. Like, like I said, when you give eggs, it's always good to start with egg yolk first. You give one egg. Uh, per day increment. So just say if for Monday to Sunday, you increase 1 8 to 2 8, 2 8 to 3 8, 4 8, 5 8 until Sunday you would complete one whole egg. That means by Sunday you would have taken the whole yolk. 
and subsequently we follow again with the same concept with egg white. So in that this will if you give it slowly, you will not so much allergy. Nah. But if you're talking about scrambled eggs, you'll make sure that the patient, the baby doesn't have any egg allergies first. I again uh, the preference of oil, uh, they say that is everyone is speaking about poly polyunsaturated oil. Oils like uh, sunflower oil, you know, it's good for the heart. You know, some people say uh, canola oil is very good for the heart. And for me, I actually, I would prefer a uh, coconut virgin oil. Coconut virgin oil. It has very, it's very, it's very nice smell, you know, it's very scented. So a lot of babies do actually like to take it. Um, good choice, uh, coconut virgin oil. And uh, you, I mean, there are many oils you can use. You can use sunflower, uh, canola. But a lot of people, people say <laughs> palm oil has, uh, is not so good. But um, I, 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 I mean, it depends on you. No, there's no, no hard and fast rule, which type of oil for frying and all that. But if you want a polyunsaturated oils, basically uh, canola oil, sunflower oil is pretty good. But uh, the, for the benefits of hormones and benefits of antibodies, uh, coconut virgin oil is, is one of my top of my list. Yeah. Right, um, Miss uh, Miss Leong Heng Nian. Now, Leong Heng Nian actually posed a question regarding um, can we introduce chicken in six months old baby? Right, I just got a mother who came in, um, came in and told me he they are giving pork. So he asked him why are you giving pork? Uh, because we we try to he says they are taking lean pork. Lean pork means no oil, very uh, lean oil. So I as I asked him why why not chicken? He says chicken. Uh, He's, he's got bad, bad reviews from people saying the chicken, to fatten up the chicken, they give steroids, uh, they give antibiotics and things like that. Now, actually, to tell you the truth, so I asked her, uh, the, what about kampung chicken, they, they asked me. So I said, actually, um, now the reason problem with kampung chicken and, and or free-range chicken means the chicken are bred in the kampung without any, any injection, so-called, you know, without any antibiotics, uh, without any steroids and all that. Free range chicken and free range eggs are uh, you got to be a bit careful, because these uh, these chicken and uh, chicken who lays their eggs and all that they are exposed to uh, some infection germs and also they are uh, they are also in uh, they are also in, uh, they also are exposed to chaching chaching which is uh, chicken chaching, so sometimes what what. What they do is instead of giving antibiotics, they don't give antibiotics. They don't give uh, any any form of uh, medication to the chicken. The chicken actually roams free, but when they come and we eat the chicken meat and the uh, and, and egg which is not properly cooked, we may be infected with the germs and the the chachi. So my advice to you is that should we give chicken? Uh, yes, we can. Should we give chicken because why? Because it has good proteins, source of proteins, it's a is a good essential proteins, is a is a grade one protein. Secondly, it's easily digestible. Uh, we always give chicken breast without the skin, without the oil. And if you give chicken, I would prefer it to be steamed, uh, mash steam uh, and boil and or boil and then um, mash it properly, blend it properly and then give it. Uh, as part of the uh, the the meal, now the without any without any taste. Uh, the thing is, that we can also use chicken in our porridge or kanji. Um, the red meats, I will I will give also, but you you, you give it later. Uh, maybe ch we always start with chicken first, lah. But in Malaysia, I think because of cultural beliefs, uh, we always think that chicken and pork uh, are the best. Uh, I mean, we, in, in other countries, they give lamb, they can give uh, beef and all that. So it all depends on, basically on, on, on preference now. But chicken is always a good choice. I hope that answers the question. Now, um, Jeff Yong asked me, when can I eat beef or lamb? Uh, like I said, beef and lamb, actually, it's, cholesterol is actually good for the baby, right? Okay? Cholesterol is no good for me or for you. Yeah, because cholesterol will actually clock up your, your arteries, clock up your veins. But in babies, they need some source of cholesterol because you have to remember the brain is the most highest source of cholesterol. So if you eat pig brain, you eat chick, uh, you know, we, we don't advise you to eat especially big uh, adults also because brain cause has a lot of cholesterol. 
Now, the cholesterol that we need to grow the brain for neuro development of the brain comes from food. And we should not be too uh, we, we, we should not be too uh, concerned about cholesterol in babies. You can give beef and lamb in babies also. But all said and done, if there is allergies uh, to beef, uh, you've got to be careful with lamb because they have this uh, cross uh, reaction, species reaction. Means you can have uh, allergy to one uh, uh, hoof animal, which is uh, beef. You can also have the same allergy towards lamb, horse, uh, if you eat horse meat, lah, I'm not saying that you should, lah, but horse, uh, camel, uh, anything which has hooves. So they have cross reaction. That's why in babies who are uh, allergic to milk, right? Milk, they can be, they keep telling them, oh, we change milk number one, um, cow's milk cannot take, we take goat's milk. They are actually the same. So some countries, uh, Africa countries and Arab countries, they give uh, camel milk. They, if they're allergic to cows, they'll, they'll be allergic subsequently to lamb and also camel. So for me, if you want to start beef and, and, and uh, lamb, there is no issues, but make sure they're not allergic. So red meat is good. With cholesterol is a little bit good for your brain. So I, I think we, we, we can give it for babies. Uh, maybe seven months uh, when you cook porridge, eight months. You can try a little bit at the time. Huh? Now, the next question is um, for Remati Palani. Baby with laryngo Malaysia can fit as a normal baby. Now, laryngo Malaysia basically means your airway is soft. Now, if your airway is soft, does it disturb the swallowing of the baby? The idea is no, because they are separate. They are separate entity. Your, your airway is in front of the, the, the your, your esophagus, your foot, foot passage. So it should not, by right, should not disturb if you if you wean at, at six months. Uh, this is if uh, if the baby can swallow, it is not an issue. Uh, you can actually, that's not a problem. So I think uh, Remati, you can safely start your baby uh, on uh, if the baby has followed the four criteria I told you. Uh, that in, in the earlier slides, if it's okay, then by all means start. No issues, right? Um, another question is from Lin Chiu Lui. Can we cook and blend meat and vegetable together with the porridge? Right now, cooking, uh, uh, you know that uh, meat takes longer time to cook, right? So to extract the sweetness of the meat and the nutrients from the meat, it is very difficult as compared to cooking vegetables. Vegetables are very fast. You can uh, cook vegetables in maybe two three minutes. So the idea is that if you want to extract the meat flavors you can put for me in, in in babies for six months when you start kanji or uh, eight months when you start kanji and porridge or eight months eight seven to eight months or so when you start kanji is our porridge you is not a good idea to blend the meat we just the baby may not be able to well, number one is baby may not be able to digest the protein so we just want the sweetness of the uh, porridge uh, the meat in the porridge so I would like to put an end block means one whole block of uh, meat into the porridge and uh, to extract the, the thing I can either slow boil it or double boil it or I can use a slow cooker to extract the sweetness and the nutrients from the meat subsequently uh, the vegetables you can either blend or you can put in a little bit later just before you uh, you are trying to really to really to serve the thing so that you retain some texture of the vegetables so that baby can baby likes the texture of vegetable and the sweetness and also you try not to overcook the, the, the vegetables which has a lot of vitamins. If you overcook the vegetables, you may end up with uh, vegetable, vegetables are very uh, bland and then you don't have uh, the vitamins inside. You might actually kill all, all of the vitamins in the, uh, in the uh, what do you call it, in the, porridge, in the vegetables. So for me, seven months, eight months, if you cook kanji first time, you must put meat, but the meat it should not be blended because if you blend it, the baby will swallow it. And if the baby swallows it, it may not be agreeable. It, they may not be able to digest the protein. Just the sweetness. Yeah? And the vegetables, you can put, you want to blend, it's up to you. But I try not to blend so that they get more texture. The baby get more texture from the porridge. And subsequently, they know how to learn to eat more, uh, vegetables and later on. A lot of babies can be very fussy when they are big. Huh? They will pick up all the vegetables. The idea is to let them see the vegetables. Let them understand the vegetable is part of their food. Don't blend and hide. Don't blend and hide. So I hope that answers your question, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Lee Chi Lui. 
And the, the, the next one will be from uh, Yong, Jeff Yong. Huh? Now, Mr. Yong has asked, after start solid food, uh, maybe pull two to three days, one. Is this common? Yeah. No, the issue is that when you the baby grows bigger, you are not expected when the baby is uh, one month old, right? So a uh, one month old, two months old, they pass motion every day, maybe two three times a day, depending on the milk that they take. Now now you are introduce something new into their diet means there's something that is different that that they have never eaten before. Does the stomach take time to adjust? The stomach takes time to adjust. Now if the patient, is, I always tell my, my, my mothers and fathers that if you take and then you find out, oh, cannot pass more, you don't panic. Now if you do it correctly, the weaning is correctly, number one, if you find, eh, hey, your milk, your, you get, a, uh, you give the four grains, that I told you, four grain rice. Uh, four grain rice is the millet, quinoa, buckwheat and brown rice. As well as you put a little bit of oil, they do actually, and uh, uh, vegetables that, you have two types of vegetables, I told you, they should not have any problems passing motion. Now, you have to understand that you are dealing with a bigger baby now. The baby is has bigger bigger uh, stump, uh, bigger intestine, the intestines are longer. It may take time from the, the food to travel from the mouth to the uh, the to the to the anus for the to pass motion. So it'll take time, it's no more that every day you have to pass motion. But the important thing if you pass the motion, it has to be soft and the baby doesn't strain and there's no bleeding. So the idea is that you have a balanced diet, even adults or children you will get a good uh, balance of, uh, of nutrients, balance of vitamins, and also you have got balance of fiber. So if you have balance of fiber in the in the your food, daily daily food, especially porridge, you won't get constipation. That that I can assure you of. So don't don't uh, worry about the child don't pass motion, but you look out if third day, fourth day still never pass, it's straining, it's crying, and the stools are hard, then you have to re adjust your uh, a quantity of uh, uh, fluids or, or water you take, you have to adjust your amount of vegetables that you put inside your porridge. And of course, if you use the four grain rice or five grain rice, uh, that you should stick to it. Don't don't change that. Thing. Now, uh, the next question is from Nicole, Miss Nicole. See, you can baby drink honey. Now, a lot of the grandmothers always ask it. Is is actually a uh, uh, it's, a, it's actually a myth that the honey will help in passing motion. Honey can cool down your body, right? So honey can be drunk. I, like I told, like I said in one of the slides, honey, we do not add honey until the baby reaches around a year. Now, reason being honey is extracted from the bee hive. And honey can, uh, we, are, these are, we are talking about either these commercial bee hives or wild bee hives. So even the commercial and uh, uh, in the in this this setting, sometimes they can have what we call uh, butylonin, uh, butylism toxin. Uh, but, uh, these toxins are actually in the uh, honey itself. When they extract it, even they cook it, even if they cook it and they they will find that it is not fully cooked. The the toxin is not uh, is not killed by heat. So when they prepare this. And they put it into the our honey for the baby, like honey puffs, or you could put it in the uh, the bottle honey drink or in the cereal. You are actually if you introduce it below six months, the baby can get uh, uh, yeah, this toxin into the body. Now this toxin, botulinum toxin, you know that botox. You you gone for those ladies who go for injection botox. They know that what happens is that it paralyzes your muscles. That's why you look so good. Your eye doesn't sag. Your face looks, your skin looks trash. Why? It's because of the fact that it paralyzes your facial muscles. Imagine if you take this uh, uh, honey, which may contain butylinum toxin, the toxin will what 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 will do is it will paralyze your muscles and you paralyze your lung your your lung muscles. When the baby it paralyzes lung muscle, the baby cannot breathe. So it's always wise to delay your honey introduction at least a year, a year plus. The second thing is the honey is always very sweet. And if you introduce honey too soon, the baby may not be able, will not like to sugary, without sugary food, they don't want to drink milk. Or they don't want to drink their milk, they don't want to drink water. So if it's my advice to you is don't give sugary uh, food to the baby, sugary fluids. Secondly, it's also not wise because it can cause tooth decay. So, so far, I think that's about all the questions that uh, is posted I hope this you can. Uh, I'll try to repost this 
in our uh, live, our Facebook in Ramwai. And for those who are my Facebook uh, friends, I may have I may post it in my own personal Facebook, and maybe ultimately we may end up posting it into YouTube. So if there is any questions, you can always ask me through my phone or through my email. And I hope that this session has provided you some knowledge for you to embark on the journey of feeding your baby well. Feeding a baby well means one, you had a healthy baby. Two, you get uh, you get a baby without any sickness. So it is my fervent hope that what I shared with you, you take it up and pass it on to your parents and to your friends. Okay, thank you for being such a great uh, audience and hope to see you soon for the next uh, every life, which may which is child proving your house and how to uh, how to how to uh, safe uh, be a safe environment in your house, which will be will be coming up soon. Thank you so much. Okay, have a nice day. Bye.